Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is David with Zion's Gate Ranch. Today we have something special to share with you. I can't wait to get into this because it's one of my favorite things to do here on the homestead. So here we go! Now, we're gonna jump right into it. We are making yogurt today. Yogurt is a staple around here. We make it so much, we love it because we have Jersey cows. We have so much milk coming in. We love our Jersey cows. Uh, we have two, Mer Mercy and Minnie, and Minnie is the mama of Mercy. Mercy's milk is just so delicious. Stick with us to the end of this video because I think you, you're really gonna like what we're gonna show you today. Now, you, what you need yourself is a stock pot this is a eight quart i like to make two gallons of milk at a time now shake up your milk real good because this is raw milk has cream in it now i'm sure you can make this with regular milk i never have because i always have we have our own cows and raw is way way better for you if you don't have it find your local people and find it because it's so good for you don't listen to the rumors raw milk is the best Go ahead and turn your burner on high. Look, perfect to the top. Perfecto. Get you a, some kind of a spatula, spoon, whatever you got. Just something that you can really get the milk moving around. We're gonna get this temperature up to 180 degrees. Once this temperature and keep stirring and get that milk from the bottom, we're going to get it up to 180 degrees and you're going to pull this thing off the burner. So you are going to have a little crusties at the bottom. What I've learned is just take your spoon. Don't scrape the bottom just ever so slightly. Just keep the milk moving in a rotation like this. The minute you start filling chunks at the bottom, stop scraping the bottom. And I like to use my little Therm Pro thermometer. If you don't have one of these, I'll leave a link in the description. You can check it out on Amazon. I do highly recommend these in your kitchen. It will help you extremely. So what we're doing here is, is we're taking this temperature to 180 because you want to, you say you could say pasteurizing, but it, what you're really doing is just getting rid of any bacteria that might be present in the milk. There's good bacteria, obviously, because raw milk does have good beneficial bacteria in it. The yogurt will not um, develop correctly if there's any sort of bacteria present in that milk. So we're limiting the possibilities. And I've tried to do this without heating it up to 180. It just doesn't work. Now you say, hey, I'm killing good probiotics here. Why am I doing this? We're gonna add back in probiotics here in just a few minutes. You'll be able to tell when you're getting close. You'll see it starts to foam like fizz and almost get into a boiling stage. Not a boiling stage, but it starts to foam and you can hear it going. It has its own sound, all right. At this point, there are, you can feel, you can feel the little crusties at the bottom. So I'm not touching the bottom now. We're getting close now we are making this in an instapot um if you don't have one go buy one <laughs> it works really well and so you want to have your instapot stainless steel um in the sink ready because when this is done we're going to pull it pour it into the stainless steel instapot in the sink why do i do with the sink because i've done it many times on the counter and it makes a mess especially when you're doing two gallons you're gonna spill some. So we're looking really good right here. Grab this and be careful, it's hot. See the Instapot right here I have ready? So let's flow it in there. Let's just get it in there. The reason why I do it on the stove like this, it's way faster than heating up your yogurt in the Instapot. That thing takes forever. Now, here's the next step. Take your pan. See the burnt stuff? It doesn't affect the milk it does as long as you ain't scraping that off so take this set it over here to the side we're going to use this let's do some ice dump it in there you want to dump about an inch 
an inch and a half in there. You don't want to do too much ice, and I'm going to show you why. So this is now cold. See, I can even touch the bottom now. We're going to take this, and we're going to set it in this, right on top of the ice. This is why if you put too much ice, this thing, when it does cool down, it will start overflowing water. <laughs> so you don't want to put too much ice, just about that much. Now, why we're putting ice in this, because we're trying to bring that temperature down to about 105. We got to bring it back down so that we can add our cultures back into it. If you add cultures right now, it's going to kill all the good cultures. So you got to get the temperature back down. Ice keeps you from waiting hours on end until it drops down to 105 degrees. All right, after a few hours and doing some few chores outside, running some fencing, I had to come back in and check on the yogurt, and we are on the spot. So you might have a little caking, like a little cream crust look on the top. It's completely normal. See what I mean? You'll have a little bit of this right here. Don't worry about that. It's just the cream drying off on top. Cream likes to rise. Stir it up. We are right at 100 degrees. Perfect. This is exactly why you don't want to add too much water because it will overflow this as the ice melts. So just stick with an inch and an inch and a half ice. So see what I mean? And this sits down in there and wants to come out. Let's bring this over here. Set it on a towel because the bottom of this is wet and you're gonna to wanna to dry this off so that you don't put a wet pot in the Instapot. Kind of rhyme, you don't want to put the wet pot in the Instapot. <laughs> now that it's dry, let's set her in the Instapot, just like that, whoa. We like to use Stony Field Organic Probiotic Yogurt. We like to start it out with this, and it needs to be plain. We don't use powder, we don't use none of that stuff. I've had really good success with Stony Field Organic Probiotic Yogurt. It has billions of probiotics. It has six live cultures in this some greek yogurts and stuff only have like two or three this has six it's a quarter cup of yogurt to every half gallon that you use so we're gonna use one cup today and our yogurt from our last batch see how creamy and smooth this is i mean look at the texture of our yogurt homemade that's exactly what you're going to end up with when we show you I mean, look, it wants to hang on your spoon. See that? Bang. That's beautiful yogurt. Drop it in there. And then when you're done like this, I just dip it down in there. And wash it out. Ba boom, ba bang, ba bing, ba bomb. Look. Done. You must take your spoon and stir. I do about 30, 45 seconds to a minute. There's a gasket that goes in here that you pressure cook with, like making broth and other things. If you leave this in here, there's a possibility of it getting that broth soup flavor on your yogurt. And you don't have to have it sealed. So just take that seal out. It comes comes out really quickly. Now, shut this up. Turn it on venting. Now let's set it for yogurt. You want it on normal, and you want it on 20 hours. The longer you go, you can actually go 24 hours. I've done 24 hours many times. It's just a little more tangy, but I found that 20 hours is just a sweet spot. It's very good at 20 hours. Tomorrow, we're going to unveil the goodness we're going to show you the secret that we figured out on how to strain and make that yogurt thick and delicious back in a flash welcome back to the next day we have accomplished the task 20 hours in the instapot now we're going to show you the next step so that you can make yourself some delicious tasting yogurt that you will not regret making this is what works for me you kind of will get the idea a good strainer like this um, it has to be a big one 
and it has to fit inside of another pan. I think it's like an eight quart. So you need a good pot and you, you need the strainer to fit in top, just like this. Next thing you're going to need is flour towels. These things come in handy so much, I actually use these to make cheese and yogurt. So this is actually one of the tricks to making this yogurt and making, making the texture just right. I've used the yogurt strainers from the store. I've bought them from Amazon. They're the fine screen yogurt strainers that you put the yogurt in, you leave it in the fridge, and then it drains the way out. But I have found out that this just don't work as well for our raw Jersey cows. What I found out best is flower towels. You can go to Walmart and buy you these very cheap. I do highly recommend these on every homestead. Flower towels, you gotta have them. You can use one if it's new. These are a little older, so if, when they get a little older, you might just wanna use two flower towels. Get your strainer, get your flower towel. Take one, just lay it over the top like that. I like to use two, then you don't lose you don't lose any of your fat and cream and stuff because if you notice in your whey at the end, you have white colored whey, you need to use another flower towel. And that was the problem with the ones from the store that you buy. There would be white creamy stuff in my whey, which it wasn't really filtering it like we, I wanted. So I found out by experience that these are definitely the best way to go. So grab your other towel, throw it over the top. Push your hand down till it just reaches the bottom. Third thing you're gonna need. This is what I use. On the farm, we use baling wire for just about everything. This is real cheap, baling wire. Every, everybody needs baling wire. So go to the store, go to like a you know, feed store, tractor supply, whatever. Get you a roll of baling wire. Baling wire. It comes in handy for everything. You could use yarn or string or you know, a shoelace, just whatever. But the good thing about this is it gets tight and I reuse it every single time. I have probably made hundreds of yogurt with just this thing right here and I, I just keep reusing it. Now take your band, so you make sure you're around the strainer only. Don't put it around the pot because you need to separate this when it's time to dump. You'll see what I mean. Squeeze tight, tight as you can get it and then twist. It needs to be strong. That's why, that's why I don't use string because you know, you'd have to tie a knot, you have to untie a knot, you have to cut it. This you just wire, unwire. You're gonna need a whisk. Every kitchen has a whisk. Take your whisk, see how thick this is? Very thick. So now what we're gonna do is just, just stir this up a little bit. There's more thicker yogurt at the bottom, there always is. Give it a light stir. So we're gonna dump this into here. You might wanna do it around a cleaner surface like in the sink, cause it does kind of splatter and you don't wanna get it all over everything. We're gonna dump that in there ever so slowly. There's a chunk, Ooh, see it splattering. Now take it to the top, let it start draining. You'll hear it start to drain. Make sure you grab the bottom handles. If you grab the top handles, you'll have that whole top part coming out and liquid coming everywhere. I can hear it draining right now. It's actually draining right now, so that's doing its job. We wanna get all this yogurt that's still remaining, we gotta get it all in there. You can add it as you keep going. Look how nice and shiny that is. You gotta get the way out. You can eat it like this, but the texture is just way off. It's too runny. And the whey, do not throw the whey away. My, your dogs would love it. Uh, our pigs go crazy over it, and it's actually very beneficial for your animals. Full of probiotics and full of protein, and it's just very beneficial. We're just gonna finish this off by dumping it all in here. Another thing that you can do while you're waiting, because you know we do the two gallons at a time, so it's full, take you a, a, just a ladle or a spoon, and scrape the bottom just a little. And you, as you do, you can hear it drain more. It's draining faster now. And what you hear draining 
is whey. Nothing but yellow colored whey. We're gonna put a lid on this, put it in the fridge. So it's about two o'clock right now. So we'll come back here this evening, you know, five, six, maybe eight hours, between five and eight hours. We'll come back in here, look at it. If it looks really down, cause it's gonna shrink down big time, um, it's ready. And what we're gonna do then is harvest our yogurt. All right, so it's been about four to five hours. I just pulled the yogurt out of the fridge. We're gonna take a look at it and show you the consistency that you're looking for. And you wanna make sure that yogurt dropped down. That's really what you're looking for to make sure that whey came out. The flour towel will feel a little bit damp and that is completely normal. That's just the uh, whey that's wicking around this and it's totally normal. So don't worry about that. See how beautiful that looks? Nice and thick. You can see that the consistency is very thick and the level has dropped quite tremendously. So that is a good sign that you have good yogurt. We're gonna dig right into this. So get yourself a whisk. You gotta have a whisk. Every farm's got a whisk. Every kitchen got a whisk. You gotta have a, a whisk. Let's dig right in. So take your whisk. You'll see all this stuff on your flour towel. It'll look like butter almost. Be honest with you. Mmm. It tastes like straight rich cream, guys. That is so delicious. We're going to mix this in. Push against the sides with your whisk. It's going to grab all that cream around the sides you see my whisk see how full that is yeah it's just very very full man would i love to take a mouthful of that <laughs> just keep dragging it till there's nothing there and then drop it in roll the whisk get that heavy heavy cream that's really what it is it's it's the remainder of fat and cream see how thick that is on top so you just gotta stir baby stir and stir keep stirring and whisking until this thing is smooth like silk. When it becomes smooth like silk, you know it's done. Now, if you like your yogurt very, very thick, I mean like very thick, you'd wanna put like a cup underneath the strainer at the very beginning like I was saying. Look what happens when I lift this up, see? What's happening is, is it's touching the way. So some of the whey will still be mixing with the yogurt. So if you stick like a glass upside down underneath the strainer, it will keep it from touching completely. And if you get it to where it's too thick, you can always add more whey back to it and stir it back up. Just play with it however you like it personally for yourself and your family. This is why I say save your yogurt cups. So you, we use the starters, whatever starters you use. Stonyfield gives you these cups, save them. You can put leftovers in them, but we mainly use our yogurt to fill up with them. Usually the two gallons makes three quarts. So here we go. Look, just like a machine would. Look, right at three quarts, it finishes it. Honestly, if I would have went another four or five hours, it would have been a lot thicker. But we're going to be asleep by then, and we wanted to show you guys how it's done. Whatever's left, very thick. See this? This is dog food. You could eat it for yourself, but guess what? We have a 14-year-old pit bull, and she loves yogurt. So your dogs will love you if you give them a few spoonfuls of yogurt over their dog food. So good for them, so healthy for them. Probiotics is a must with your animals. So I give her the leftovers because, you know, you gotta take care of your furry friends, right? <laughs> your furry <laughs> friends love you. So just dump it in their bowl. Look, just whatever's left over, and that'll be enough for her for have breakfast. Mix it with her food. They'll love you for it, trust me. I hope that you guys like this video and I hope that you try this yogurt method. I think it'll change your life. We love you guys. We'll see you on the next one. Stay tuned for more videos. Peace.